previously we uh, saw how useful Laplace transform can be when solving an LTI circuit and the reason is obvious in order to solve an LTI circuit what we have uh, done was we uh, formulated it okay and the formulation uh, equations were LTI differential equations and when uh, when you have an LTI differential equation uh, Laplace transform is a very useful tool in order to obtain the solution okay so we already uh, therefore uh, we are already familiar with how useful Laplace transform can be for LTI circuit analysis now what uh, we will start doing starting from this lecture is we will take uh, that approach one step further in the sense that we will skip the uh, formulation time domain part altogether and uh, directly obtain the Laplace transform of uh, the circuit so to speak okay and well will be clear what we mean by that soon enough but the main idea is as follows okay so given an LTI circuit the following set of uh, steps uh, seem to be a, a very powerful approach in order to solve an LTI dynamic circuit okay given an LTI circuit follow the steps below okay first replace each component by its S domain equivalent equivalent okay and what this S domain equivalent means we will see very soon but for now uh, it's to be defined okay S domain equivalent and after that operation obtain the so-called S domain circuit okay. now one nice thing about S domain circuit is it behaves in almost every way like an LTI resistive circuit okay so the Henry's and the Farad's of the LTI dynamic circuit will now be all ohms okay in S domain circuit that is S domain circuit will be just like an LTI resistive circuit okay and we know that all the equations are algebraic in an LTI uh, resistive circuit and clearly it's easier to uh, formulate or to work with such a circuit and then once we have the S domain circuit treat the S domain circuit as an LTI resistive circuit okay we will see why we can treat it like an LTI resistive circuit at this point it's not obvious and solve for the Laplace transforms of the, uh, the voltages and the currents that we are asked to uh, compute to find out of the S variables okay and finally once we have those Laplace transforms let's say 
Vc of s, Laplace transform of the capacitor voltage that we are to find out. The last step is the easiest. We take that Laplace transform and uh, we obtain the time domain, corresponding time domain signal uh, of it using the uh, Laplace transform pairs uh, table, for instance. Obtain the time domain signals of the ask variables through inverse of the transform. Here is a glimpse of what we will uh, become familiar uh, doing. Okay, for instance, consider the following simple source-free circuit. Okay, we have the time domain circuit. Okay, a capacitor connected in parallel or series with an LTI resistor. So here we have the capacitor measured in farads. This is the capacitance of our capacitor. This is the resistance of our resistor, okay, measured in ohms. And they share the same voltage, which is denoted by V. And this is the current passing through the resistance, okay? It's the time domain circuit. We have no source, but the capacitor uh, has some initial stored energy. And due to that energy, there will be some non-zero uh, signals, okay? So suppose that the initial capacitor voltage is something, 6 volts minus 18 volts. And for that, we have to figure out the corresponding current that flows through the resistor, okay? Now, this circuit, after developing, uh, developing the techniques how to transform time domain circuit to uh, a Laplace domain circuit or S domain circuit, will become, after the transformation, the following circuit, okay? Now, here, what we're going to do, we're going to write this thing here. Okay, 1 over SC near our capacitor. And this, that thing, 1 over SC, will be the impedance of our capacitor. And impedance simply means resistance, or the new word for resistance, okay, in a forest domain circuit. But, but what's important is its unit is now ohms, not farads, okay? And then this R, the resistance, carries directly to so-called S-domain circuit. And then there will appear a voltage source. And that voltage source will be representing the initial condition of the capacitor, okay? And we'll see that it can be represented by this V0 over S. Note that S is R complex variable uh, in Laplace domain. And the voltage now becomes capitalized V of S. This is time domain. Everything is a function of T. And here we are in S domain or Laplace domain. Okay, So notation is such that we capitalize the lowercase letters and they, they uh, represent the the uh, Laplace transforms of the time domain signals here, okay? And then for the current, we have the capital I, I of S. Now, in order to obtain I of T in the time domain circuit, what we do is we solve 
uh, a differential equation for the circuit. It's a very simple first order, but nevertheless, we solve a differential LTI differential equation. To solve this S domain circuit, what we do is we just treat it as an LTI resistive circuit. Okay, let's do that, and so we don't have to deal with any differential equations. Note that everything is all the all the uh, components like capacitors, inductors, and resistors. They are they are represented by something, some number, and that unit of that number is ohms. Okay, therefore, it's like an LTI resistive circuit. So if we treat this as an LTI resistive circuit, here we have an ohm, here we have an ohm. That means here we have a resistance, here we have a resistance. Well, we don't call it resistance anymore, we call it impedance. And they are in series, therefore, the effective resistance or impedance seen by the source is this plus that. And voltage dividing that, divided by that uh, effective or equivalent impedance will give us the current, I of S. And once we have that current, According to this procedure, we take its immersed Laplace transform and it should equal I of t. So let's see whether that's the case. So looking at that circuit, we have I of S equals the voltage V0 over S divided by the equivalent impedance or the resistance seen by the voltage source, which is this guy plus R. R plus 1 over SC. And that can be written as V0 over R times 1 over S plus 1 over RC. Okay? And then once we have I of S, I of T, according to the procedure here, must equal the immersed Laplace transform of this I of S, immersed Laplace transform of. I of S, and we know the immersed Laplace transform of this is just a first order term, it's quite easy, and that it reads V0 over R, E to the minus T over the time constant, okay, RC, for T greater than equal to zero, okay. So, if we follow this procedure, uh, we can treat a circuit, and even a dynamic circuit, as if it's a LTI resistive circuit, and we can do everything uh, in a much simpler way. We don't have solid differential equations. We obtain for the ask variable, in this case the current, and that ask variable will be the Laplace transform of the signal that we are after. So as the final step, step three, what we do is we take its immersed Laplace transform to figure out the signal in time domain. Okay, now let's try to discover how to go from a time domain circuit to uh, an equivalent S domain circuit. Okay, so let's begin R. Analysis. test domain circuit. First of all, let's begin by observing some very simple but very useful facts. KCL and KVL hold in S domain. Okay, this is a very straightforward consequence of the fact that Laplace transform, Laplace transformation is a linear operator. Okay. So in other words, suppose that you wrote uh, some node equations um, somewhere, in some node in your circuit. So due to KCL, the sum of these n currents equals zero. Now, if you take the Laplace transforms of both sides, and since Laplace transformation is uh, linear, it's obvious that this would produce I1 of S, 
i2 of s plus i n of s equals 0. Okay, so if KCL, if a certain set of currents satisfy KCL in time domain, it's clear that their transforms must also satisfy the same equation. And the dual phenomena, KVL, uh, also holds in S domain. Okay, now how about the terminal equations? Okay, let's begin by the simplest one, namely the resistor, LTI resistor. Okay, so what we have is <coughs> VRT equals R times I RT. So this is Ohm's law, the terminal equation for the resistor. Okay, note that this is an algebraic equation. Therefore, the form of the equation will be preserved when you go to the Laplace domain. That is, if you take the Laplace transform of both sides, what you obtain is the R of S, the Laplace transform of the resistor voltage equals R times the Laplace transform of the resistor card IR of S. Okay, so since the terminal equation is in algebraic form, it's directly carried to S domain. That will be true also for our other components whose terminal equations are uh, algebraic equations like ideal transformer or the uh, uh, dependent sources. Okay, so as for the uh, diagram or the schematics, It's the same uh, in S domain, just like in the time domain. So this is how we draw the component okay, in time domain. And when this is transformed, when this one port is transformed to S domain or Laplace domain, we draw it exactly in the same way. Okay, So R is R. The only difference is that when we label the voltages and currents, we simply, by convention, we simply capitalize the lowercase letters. Okay? So now this is a function of S and the current is a function of S. Okay, now let's move on to our dynamic components, for instance the capacitor. Okay, the capacitor here with initial condition V0 in this example has been represented by some resistance which we're going to call impedance and some independent voltage source that's representing the initial stored energy in the capacitor okay now let's see why capacitor can be represented in this way all we have to do is just start with the uh, terminal equation in time domain and obtain the corresponding equation in Laplace domain by simply taking the Laplace transforms of both sides and then once we have the equation it's very easy to interpret it okay and that interpretation will give us what kind of circuit uh, appears in S domain that would represent the capacitor Terminal equation in differential equation 4 reads the current equals capacitance times the rate of change of voltage. Okay, ICT equals CDVCT. Okay, and then what we do is we take the Laplace transforms of both sides and that yields 
i c of s, the Laplace transform of i c of t equals c times the Laplace transform of dvc or c times vc dot. So whenever we have f dot f b uh, f of t, a time domain signal, its Laplace transform was in terms of the Laplace transform of f is s times f of s and then we have to take care of also the initial condition we have to uh, subtract from s f of s the initial condition okay for the f of t therefore we see that produces s v c s and then we have lowercase v c zero minus so that's the initial capacitor voltage. That's the Laplace transform of Vc dot. Okay. Therefore, let the initial condition be denoted by V0. We have Ic of S equals Sc <coughs> times the voltage Vc of S minus Cv0. Okay. V0 is Vc0 minus. It's just, a, it's just a notation. So this is therefore what the equation uh, becomes in S domain. Okay, so let's call this equation 1. And there's another form of the term equation, namely the form where the voltage appears on the left hand side. Let's also talk about that. Vct equals Vc0 minus plus 1 over C from 0 minus to T IC tau D tau. Okay. Now, if you take the Laplace transform of this equation, what you have is Vc of S equals this was V0. Now the Laplace transform of a constant is that constant divided by S, right? So here we have V0 over S, and then we have the integral of some signal. And the Laplace transform of that is the Laplace transform of the integral divided by S. So what we have therefore is plus 1 over SC times IC of S. Okay. So this is our other equation. Note that uh, since two term equations are equivalent, one is the differential equation representation, the other is integral representation, they are lot less domain uh, representations should also be equivalent, and it's not difficult to see that. One and two are equivalent equations. You can obtain one from the other. Now what remains now, we have obtained equations, but what we need is something more than the equations. We need a circuit representation, okay, for those equations. So let's, by looking at the equations, try to figure out how a capacitor can be represented, okay, uh, in a circuit. Now, this is our component in time domain, okay? The voltage is VCT, C is the capacitance, this is IC of T, and somewhere near the capacitor we write the initial condition, VC0 minus equals V0, okay? And now, this can be represented by term equation in differential equation form or term equation in integral equation uh, integral form and we have just obtained the uh, corresponding s domain equations okay now let's look at the first equation and try to figure out what kind of circuit uh, produces such an equation so what we have is we have the current 
on the left hand side and for for now suppose that initial condition is zero so forget about the cv0 term so what we have is current equals something times voltage okay now since current equals something times voltage that something must have unit moles okay because it transforms volt to amps therefore the unit of sc is moles or the unit of 1 over sc is ohms therefore that 1 over sc will be our uh, so-called impedance of the capacitor okay so what we have therefore is plus minus vc of s and here we have the capacitor in s domain circuit and what we do is somewhere near that capacitor we write 1 over sc and the unit of 1 over sc is ohms okay so because it transforms uh, voltage it transforms current to voltage and here is our current IC of S now this was the uh, version for the special case where V0 equals 0 but for the general case we have also this term minus CV0 so <clears throat> here we have therefore this is some current and then here we have another current those two currents when they put, put uh, when you put them together it, they produce the current of the capacitor therefore to account for that current what we do is we add okay minus cv0 excuse me uh, here minus cv0 because current direction of current is ic like that so what we have is ic equals the current passing through this impedance which is the voltage divided by 1 over sc which produces scv bc and then plus this current which is minus cv0 now we can get rid of this minus by playing with the direction of the current source and then we'll be done this is therefore how uh, capacitor can be can be represented in s domain and this circuit is suggested by equation one okay now let's also try to figure out the circuit uh, that's suggested by equation two again which clearly should be equivalent to this so what we have is again consider that uh, suppose that the initial condition is zero consider the special case so what we have here is plus minus vc of s here we have one over sc unit ohms and this is the current ic of s okay so vc of s equals since this is ohms this impedance times ic of s when the initial condition is zero but for the general case to that voltage we have to add another voltage and that voltage is representing the initial condition so for therefore for the general case we have to add to that picture a term that represents this voltage addition and that term suggests that we have to introduce an independent voltage source okay so that's the general picture v0 over s and this circuit 3 is suggested by equation 2 therefore a capacitor in time domain with some non zero initial condition v0 could either be represented by this formation in s domain or this formation okay okay now as for inductor we don't have to spend much time because it's a dual component we can just quickly go over it and then move on to other components okay three 
induct. Okay, again, you start from the thermal equation time domain and you transform it to S domain by Laplace transformation. And what you obtain is uh, VL of S equals SL IL S minus L I zero. Okay. This is what the thermal equation becomes in S domain or if you use the integral representation of the thermal equation you obtain I L of S equals I zero of S plus one over S L E L of S. Okay. And it's not difficult to see that those two equations, as they should, are equal to one another. You can obtain one from the other. So let's figure out the circuit or the schematics uh, interpretation of those equations. So what we have here is our component in time domain. The voltage is lowercase vl of t. The current is il of t. L is the inductance in Henry's. And initial condition is denoted by I0. And then in S domain after Laplace transformation what we have is VL of S equals okay, supposing we have for, this, uh, for the special case I0 equals 0, what we have is VL of S equals SL times IL of S. Okay. This is voltage, this is current, and current is transformed to voltage by this SL thing. Therefore, the unit of that SL must be ohms. Okay. Therefore, the impedance, generalized resistance, corresponding to an inductor, LTI inductor, is S times the inductance. Okay. So, therefore, this suggests the following. SL plus minus, this is VL of S, this is measured in ohms, and here we have the current IL of S. Okay, but for the general case, to that voltage, we have to add another voltage, minus L I0, and that can be done by introducing an independent voltage source. Okay. Okay, plus minus, if the polarity is plus minus, then the value will be minus Li0, but we can get rid of that minus by simply reversing the polarity. So here we have minus plus, and right here Li0. Therefore, this equation suggests this representation uh, in this circuit for the LTI inductor. Equivalently, for this guy we have plus minus VL of S. Here we have SL ohms, the impedance of our inductance. This is IL of S. And then to this current, uh, which is VL over SL, to this current we have to add another current, I0 of S, and together those two currents make IL. Therefore, this term, I0 over S, should be represented by following current source, I0 over S. Okay, so the LTI inductor uh, can either be represented by this uh, picture in, uh, in S domain circuit or this formation uh, in the S domain circuit. Okay, for the, even though it's obvious, but for the sake of completeness, let's go over the other components like the dependent source, the ideal transformer, and so on. Dependent source is a component, we're talking about LTI dependent source, 
where the uh, terminal equation is an algebraic equation. Since the equation is algebraic, it directly carries uh, to S domain. It's the same in S domain. All you have to do is you just capitalize the lowercase letters. So plus minus V plus minus alpha Ix. Suppose this is a current control voltage source. The term equation is V equals alpha times some constant times the current. Therefore, in Laplace domain, we have the same equation. And as for the circuit representation, we use the same picture. Okay. Plus minus. Now the letters are capital. This lowercase v becomes capital V. And plus minus, this is alpha times capital Ix. This is the Laplace transform of the control variable Ix of t. V of s equals alpha times Ix of s. And same goes for the ideal transformer. Because the terminal equation for the ideal transformer, uh, they are also in algebraic form. Ideal transformer. This is how we draw it in time domain n1 to n2 turns ratio. Voltage of the first coil, voltage of the second coil, current I1, and this is current I2. The terminal equations are V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2 and N1 I1 of T plus N2 I2 of T equals 0. Okay. Since they are algebraic equations, they will be the same in S domain. Okay. So after Laplace transformation, what we do is We draw the same picture, okay, to represent either transformer. And what we do is we capitalize the lowercase letters. This becomes V2. This is capital I1. This is capital I2. And the terminal equations are the same. V1 of S over N1 equals e2 of s over n2 and n1 i1 of s plus n2 i2 of s equals 0. Okay. Now, let's also uh, figure out some certain things that we're familiar with from LTI resistive circuits. Let's try to obtain the extensions or generalizations of those concepts, such as the input resistance of a source-free one port. Okay, so here is our natural extension. Consider the following one port that's part of a circuit, an LTI circuit. N. V of t, and this is I of t. And we assume that there are no independent sources inside. Okay? Now we will try to introduce the uh, equivalent of input resistance. Uh, in LTI resistor circuits for the S domain circuit. Okay, and for that to be able to talk about an input resistance, 
or the equivalent resistance or the effective resistance, we have to assume no independent sources inside. Okay. Now, note that in S domain uh, circuits, the dynamic components, if they have non zero initial conditions, also introduce independent sources okay, to the picture. Therefore, in addition to this assumption for our generalization, we also have to uh, put the following constraint or the condition. We have to assume that the initial conditions are zero. Zero initial conditions, okay? So no initial stored charge and capacitors and no, uh, no initial flux in the inductors. Okay, and then this can be defined in an uh, unambiguous way. The impedance of the one port N, therefore, what is defined as Z of S equals the Laplace transform of the voltage appearing across its terminals over the Laplace transform of the current. Okay. So that's the impedance of such a one port, LTI one port, provided that it satisfies these two conditions. Now, impedance, since it's the ratio of voltage to current, is measured in ohms. It is measured in ohms. Okay. And then, so this is the generalization of resistance. And not surprisingly, the generalization of conductance is 1 over the impedance. And that is called admittance. Okay, the admittance of a one port satisfying those conditions is the ratio of current to voltage, okay, appearing at the port terminals, or equivalently, one over the impedance. And it's measured in Siemens or MOS. Okay, therefore, for our simple components like resistor, capacitor, and inductor, we can easily now write down, based on our previous analysis, the corresponding impedances and admittances. Okay. So that definition immediately implies the following table. RLC. Now, for a resistor with resistance R, ZR of S is R simply, and the admittance of that LTI resistor is same as the conductance of the resistor, or 1 over R. For the uh, inductor, ZL of S simply is LS, okay, or, well, or S, uh, SL, and Y of LS is 1 over the impedance, okay, 1 over SL. And as for capacitor with capacitance C, ZC of S is 1 over SC and YC of S, the admittance is simply 1 over 1 over SC, which is SC. Okay. 